Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Keanu Esports stream. My name is Shadi Hanna, and I'm joined, of course, by the lovely Ancient Angel. We're back again on the Keanu Husky stream here for some more Valorant. Jumping into Seaval West. We're in phase one in our second round against Titan Esports Blue, which is representing California State University Fullerton Campus. It's going to be a really, really fun game, and already the players are jumping straight into Agent Select. Angel, nothing too crazy here that we're noticing in our game setup right now. Yeah, nope. This is pretty standard from both teams. It's that standard meta comp we see KJ, Omen, Sova, KO, and Jet. It's it's calm, it's casual, it's classic. I'm noticing a rechange of the roles. Yes. So I noticed that in yesterday's match, um, they went they decided to swap back to the mat na the these roles. Now, there's something to be said about this role swap, right? Which is Sat putting Savo back on the duelist, this is obviously what he's been playing with the team since May. There's that level of comfort, right? And when we talked about the rationale for the role swap, you know, and having the privilege to speak to the players and get a sense from their, their feelings and thoughts on the subject, uh, their argument for role swapping was it's just what we want to play, like, in terms of, you know, our natures and our styles, right? Bondo comes from a really deep duelist bragging background. Uh, Savo tr tr traditionally played Sentinel for the Huskies, you know, back in the 2022 season. Uh, but I think given the time before their big competition in Red Bull this weekend at 11 a.m., uh, the Red Bull Campus Canadian Clutch, uh, Campus Clutch Canadian Nationals at 11, uh, I think they just wanted to play, you know, what they've been practicing all year. And, and I think it's a smart move for the time being, sticking to what you've been working on and make the swap when, you know, there's less pressure on you to perform. Smart move to stick with what's, you know, been tested already. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. As we see this aggressive pistol round coming out for CSUF. Chris M immediately on this reflank towards heaven finds two. Tiny with one on the site does get traded out, but Senja and Bondo clean it up. It's a confident pistol round and a return to form from Keanu. That was um, explosive to say the least. I, it even looked like when Chris was knife out running through tree, I'm pretty sure Sacred Jukes had, uh, or no, it wasn't Sacred Jukes. I, I think it was maybe been a uh, Quacksmack or Wizdran seemed to have their eyes on him. But I think the, the overwhelm, the crunch out cat, there was just too many too many g angles that they were being contested from at the same time. It was just kind of overwhelmed by uh, all of the stimuli and they just couldn't handle all of that heat. So Chris gets a nasty flank timing on heaven, finds the first two and the rest fall like dominoes. They really did. It was just so beautiful watching that just quick <clears throat> 1v2 in towards heaven, that, that beautiful reflank we saw. It's going to be a more passive default out of the side of CSUF. They just kind of want to take away some weapons here, try and burn some of this utility out. You see Savo and Chris M doing this double clear A main. Ixine does get cleared. And now with both flashes burned by Bondo, they fully cleared out A main. No presence towards mid, and they still have these two players on the B site, on the side of Keanu. Oh, does this kind of lack of info draw any rotations? No. No, it doesn't. There's the commitment onto the B site now as Tiny with that Ares just trying to spam through. Gets that second pick of the round onto Sacred Jukes. Ooh, nice timing from Wizdrand though through this mid lurk. Yeah, but that alarm bot spots him out. Chris M cleans up one, sees McLogic for the second. Senja taking one in the meantime, and it's now a flawless anti-eco out of the side of Keanu. Yeah, I mean, you can't really ask for anything more on a round like that. Uh, it's exactly what you want to see for the Huskies because they're going to be able to carry all of those guns over here into CSUF's buy round, which is, you know, really their first attempt at trying to break through. Uh, you know, we talk about Ascent being a, a CT-sided map. It's really defender-favored. You're looking for any little advantage you can find on the uh, offensive side, and being able to go into your first, uh, you know, buy round against the Huskies bonus, uh, get, um, allowing them to carry over into this round with a full five guns is, is probably worst-case scenario here for this round three. There's that Piles flash that we've seen so much of uh, on Ascent. Again, this this meta on Ascent, is, is, it's been very developed for a very long time. As we're on this anti-eco, the A hit has come in. Savo was not clear just yet. He and Chris M are able to combine for two on the site, but Savo and Tiny go down. Chris M's able to find yet another kill onto Ixine. It's a 2v2. Bondo with the flash out. Jenny isn't able to find anything. Senja in a 1v2 clutch. This is an Doesn't... interesting play from Senja here. Rather than going for the tree fight, he knows he's going to get breaking down by that door, but he's actually going to get caught by this alarm bot here. And now both players on the side of CSUF will know exactly where he is. They have vandals in hand. 
He's going to use that turret to clear out a main. Needs to be careful of wine, but the hit's coming from someplace else. He has one molly available for this one. Turret just watching towards heaven. Senja takes that out with ease. The swing comes through. The molly's going to force McLogic out. No, it doesn't because it landed on top of the dice. McLogic on the swing. Senja got timinged. And that's the bonus round going the way of CSUF. Yeah, that, that crunch out main, I think Savo just couldn't get the spray control down the way he wanted to onto Exine. And as soon as he fell, they were able to shift their focus directly to Chris M. It was just kind of a series of unfortunate events where Savo spray doesn't connect. Chris expected that kill to go down and then got swung onto. Bondo then trapped back Jenny into a 1v3 with limited utility available. And by the time that Senja was, you know, in position to try to take that fight, uh, that molly landing on top of the dice was really just, you know, the icing on the cake. Now we see that flash and dash combo. Savo gets caught out in mid, though, as no one is able to watch it. Bondo only able to find one and gets traded out immediately. Is now Chris M just trying to pepper some players in through Cat. And Senja's alone at this B site where it seems Fullerton want to hit. There's the smoke. Smoke's tiny off CT. He has to commit the drone. But the Nano Swarm counters the drone. Oh. The Shock Dart not getting anything done. Senja falls back into the B site now as the hit comes in through lane. It's Sacred Jukes trying to take first context. Gets traded out by Quacksmack. And Chris, look at Chris. He's on this full flank through spawn right now. Question is, does that... Oh no, the turret gets taken down. They have no knowledge of if any flank is coming through. Tiny now just having to play this... 1v3 for now. Buy some time for Chris. Oh, that timing. He's being held. Chris on the clear stairs. Doesn't clear Wizdran. It's a 1v3 for Tiny. And they want to take this gun away from him. Look, they're actually pushing him a little bit. Yeah, they know where he is. But I think with the economy and, and the way that the, the momentum is right now, you don't really want to commit to more of a hunt than this. Tiny going to have to run away. I just about now, if he wants to save his rifle, uh, okay, yep, he's made it out just in time, as well as the three players from Fullerton, but man, that was a, that was a tough round for the Huskies. That was unexpected, to be honest, I mean, th that wasn't really the round that you think Fullerton's gonna win, it's the round where the Huskies are going into it full buy into two, two rifle carryover, uh, from CSUF and now Titan Esports, they've got five grand in the bank for Quacksmack and everybody's bought up. Husky is on four sheriffs this round. I, I think those two picks out mid from Quacksmack really just shaped the tone of the round because you're already going into your defense in, uh, on B site down in a 3v5. You're down 3v5, but you did... I mean, this is kind of a nice read. You see Fullerton just wanting to work this uh, B hit again. But you have two players here with sheriffs trying to hold a crossfire, and Tiny is here on site with that vandal in hand. Now Senja does get blinded off the angle lane, and Savo actually does get taken down, but Tiny and Senja each able to equalize in terms of pure numbers. Senja immediately falls as Quacksmack trying to... Oh my goodness, Tiny! Able to find three, moves it to a 1v1, Bondo and Sacred Jukes! And I think they called out that he's one shot because you know all that damage stuck. So Bondo just needs one body tap and he'll find it. That was a little scary. <laughs> that first shot going wide. I got a little nervous for him. But Bondo will clean it up. It just, ever so dependable Bondo. Just being able to, to lock things down. Get out this clutch. I mean, and we also have to talk about just Tiny being an absolute menace on this anchor position in towards B. He's able to find three before going down, keeps numbers in favor of Keanu, makes it a 1v1 clutch. It was just beautiful play out from Tiny. And and that's how Keanu are able to get their third. Yeah, I mean, every single time you see the Huskies on Ascent, you know Tiny's got B locked down. Like, it, it, it doesn't matter. And and most teams are going to run this the same way, right? That KJ leading towards that B side, that Sova traditionally playing B. Ironically, as I'm saying this, Tiny's actually going to shift over to A for a little arrow lineup here. I'm curious to see where this one goes. And I think that will just be outside uh, A main. It looks like it actually went shallow, though. It looked like it landed in tree. So, not sure if that was just a misread on the power required, but... Uh, Tiny will rotate over into this mid play, and actually Bondo picking up the slack here on B. We've seen we've seen Bondo 
go crazy as well as tiny both initiators for this side going insane salvo on this backstab in through spawn is able to find two that's huge for opening up this round as bondo pushing around that smoke and b main he's able to find that first on the quack smack the second on to exine it's now just mclogic in a 1v5 salvo takes out the turret mclogic is boxed in towards lobby we see it there it is mclogic has to give up the angle bondo Gives him one, but Senja makes it no more. It's four for Keanu. <laughs> yeah, they don't want to. They don't want to give him anything. I think the Huskies, after that that second round victory for CSUF, they're saying, "I'm not given anything else." That's the that's the last round you're getting here on Ascent. And I mean, in their defense, the last time we saw the Huskies on Ascent, 13-0 against CSUN in their most recent uh, in their most recent CVAL match. I, I, this is this is such a good map for them, and I think you know that last round really put a fire in them, saying we we can't let that happen anymore. You're not we're not giving anything else for free for the rest of this match, uh, and it's showing. It definitely is right. Like Sacred Jukes getting kind of spammed up by this recon bolt here. Chris M on this hold. If Exine is able to get a nice solid peek, it could be deadly with this Marshall. But of course, as soon as I say that, Chris M takes the timing in his hands and just walks back. He got a little bit of info and is now starting to play more passive. I, I find it quite interesting that this Ross, wait, that's a Hunter's Fury out of Tiny? Onto presumably just to clear out A in the mid round, as well as that lane towards B. That's a huge piece of utility just invested on the side of Keanu. Maybe there was a read or maybe it was just for an info play. Who knows, as the Owl Drone now gets committed towards this B site. Sacred Jukes leading the charge for Fullerton. Utility getting destroyed and delayed. Bondo with the flash through the smoke into market. Actually goes down after popping the null command. While everyone's suppressed. Tiny and Chris M move into the site. Exine isn't able to find anything. Senja goes down. Quacksmack jumps down towards the site. It's now McLogic again. 1v3. I was going to say 4, but Bondo just ran out of time on that null command. Now McLogic with a Sheriff can be deadly, but Tiny just jumping with the classic right click. Oh my goodness, that's that's a way to find five. It's a great story for Keanu, but the sad story for me on that round was the hospital ambulance combo of Chris M and Tiny sprinting towards Bondo's unrevitalized corpse, trying to put the pieces together before the timeout on the KO. They really wanted to save, preserve that gun going into the next round and uh, unfortunately just ran out of time to do it, uh, but they at least get the round win. Uh, you know, I mean, that was pretty much theirs to win. It's a full buy into the save from CSUF playing into this, this attack on Ascent B where, you know, they keep going for it round after round and round after round, they keep getting shut out at the gate by all this utility and Tiny finds his first. Tiny able to find his first. Bondo with that trade onto Sacred Jukes. There's a swing out from Quacksmack and Bondo gets taken down. That's huge. Chris M now just playing behind the dark covers, <laughs> able to spam down Sacred Jukes as soon as he gets res. So you uh, talk about that hospital. Oh boy. Oh man. At this point, both <laughs> KOs needing to go straight to the morgue. What? And now the dash out onto the site. It's a retake oh. from Tiny. There's a bit of an extra swing from Salvo. McLogic able to find another spam from Quacksmack. Tags up Senja's feedies just a little bit. It's a 2v3 on the retake. Chris M now in through lane. Is he able to find Wizdran? No, he isn't. He swings right into the crosshair of the Omen. Senja, 1v3, can find one. Can't make it any further. It gives Fullerton a third round here. That was just awkward mechanics. I, I'm I'm crying laughing uh, thinking about that play onto Sacred Jukes, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, the, the the main thing to me about that round was just honestly really unfortunate mechanical errors. It was it was Bondo not correctly positioning his spray on his shot. Savo with the smoke dash out onto Switch. He actually tripped off the table, so that extra step he took, he was trying to reposition. He ended up falling and dropping, and it sent his crosshair to the moon. He wasn't able to line up the shot. And just little tiny micro micro mispositioning, micro errors that cost them that round that really they look like they were perfectly set up for. Yeah, it did. It looked like they were so set for that for that play. And I think it was just those those small micro mechanics that you were talking about just did them in the end. Now we see Senja over towards this A side. And I think this makes sense. You want to keep Savo over towards B. He has such deep control of this angle. You're able to get this stack off 
Alarm bot does get triggered in towards tree. Chris M forced <coughs> to use one of his two precious smokes onto that angle just to try and keep Quacksmack at bay. It's that op out from Savo. And, you know, the thing that we say about the op is it, it forces that retake potential to be really limited. So it's going to have to be on the three players on the site to defend. Bondo's able to find that first kill onto Exeen. And there's Chris M just playing bit by bit. Bondo's able to find a second. Senja pushed out due to a nano swarm. Pushed out due to a nano swarm. As Savo. Look how deep Savo is here. Yeah, this is this is great setup from him. He knows that mid cross is coming and he's he's ready for it. And I think Bondo's gonna try to time this swing as well. It's actually Savo. Oh Savo! Oh no. Oh, oh and Chris M. Chris M was able to find one. I think it's going to have to be on Quacksmack here to try and rush it. Senja just trying to keep him at bay, keep him contained. As there's the swing, Tiny on the site. Forces Quacksmack to plant behind the generator. They know where he is. He's going to be able to get that plant off. Presume oh, no, he doesn't. There's no more time left. So at this point, Chris M. Uh, maybe Chris M just wants to try and grab the off there. I don't think he'll have time no. to. No. No, they got scared. I mean, I, I, this Quacksmack guy, I'm looking at him versus the rest of the team, and I don't want to say, like, the rest of the team is not playing, because they're definitely here. They're definitely there. But I feel like they look like a very different team if Quacksmack's not not present. Like, this guy is, is coming up so big in so many rounds. He's finding so many first bloods on the Sova. Uh, he's, he's finding these insane clutches. He's very dependable in the post-plant. Uh, he's been a big factor in this team's ability to perform so far. And, I mean, stats don't lie, Angel. This Stats only speak truth. Yeah, that's true. Um... We can, we can, there's no such thing as intangibles. And as we see Exene running through both of his smokes, trying to get anything done with that stinger. Sabo hey, 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 space created, space storm. created. Look, it's a B push. It's a, it's a space play, Angel. It's a space play. Yeah, but there's so much time for everyone on Kiano to refocus back towards B. We immediately see it here. You're, you're just not seeing what Exene's seeing. He's seeing a line that you just don't see. I think I'm seeing 10 deaths on Exene. <laughs> Which is every single round so far in this game. That's what I'm seeing. Uh, well, I, you know what? I just said stats don't lie, so I don't really have much of an argument to that. <laughs> yeah, and now we see Savo maybe looking to try and updraft over this blade storm as this hit comes in. There oh, it is. Oh my, my goodness! The just very quick play out of the blade storm. He's able to find three on the round. Is Savo now pushing <laughs> in with the classic, the 360, so Bondo can get the kill? It guarantees a lead at this half for Kiano, and I mean, this is, this is just insanely confident <clears throat> out of Kiano. Yeah, that was um, that was a that was that was one of the rounds of Valorant. I I we like Sabo, he had a, a weird start to the game where, you know, he was getting frags, but it was mostly off the backs of somebody else creating space for him. Uh, you know, we saw some really good positional movements. I think the best play we've seen from him so far outside of that one was, uh, I believe it was round four or five when he pushed deep into attacker spawn to find those two kills on that late rotation through. Uh, he's had these really weird rounds where he goes from, you know, kind of, sort of, not contributing a whole ton to rounds like that where literally it's first blood and the next two consecutive kills are just him alone with no utility, no teammates, nothing, just solo carrying the round. Uh, it's 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 interesting to go from that to whiffing two op shots in a row to 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 die just two rounds prior. Um, how crazy he goes from one end to the of the spectrum to the other. Yeah, but I think that says something about Savo. He is a very I think I think he's pretty mentally sound, right? When we when we look at a player like that, what going from missing two op shots that like realistically you should have been able to get on lock to then getting three with a blade storm, which in my opinion, a blade storm is harder to use than an op. <laughs> um, I don't think that's an opinion. I think I think that's a certifiable fact. But okay, yeah. So <laughs> so then I think that proves my point exactly. Being able to just be, you know, mentally oh. calm enough to do that. Oh, the paranoia play gets punished. Maybe out of a, as a read out of Fullerton Savo gunned down by the four players towards main. Although you do trade, you trade turret for for a life. You <laughs> Tur know, like turret, turret for Savo. Savo. That's pretty. That's pretty equal. Yeah. I don't think that's. I think Savo is a bit bigger than one turret. Oh but. boy. <laughs> and uh, now that free pick on Bondo, I think this aggression may have been read out by Fullerton. So this is pretty good plays by them. Asenja 
now being called on to be the anchor of this B site. Fullerton looking to hit it. This is the KJ ultimate classic. You cross into boat, you use that ultimate as soon as you hear that push through main. But I think this time around, he's actually just going to play his life here. Yeah, just playing to live, buying time for Tiny, who gets two on this hold from CT. Forces himself to back off as now the Hunter's Fury comes out. Chris M looking to teleport right into the site to help out his teammate Senja. Senja doesn't need it though. He's already oh. found one. Chris M goes down to Sacred Jukes. The Shock Dart's able to take care of Sacred Jukes as he pushes out towards the switch house. Senja on the swing to find a second. It's Senja and Tiny, these anchors that we've talked about yet again to deliver an eighth for Kieno. Now looking for 9-3 <coughs> at the half. Yeah, this is uh, it, it's a nice it, it's a nice adjustment from the Huskies to go from a pretty well. I think we can say slow start on ascent to to coming into the big finish that they're at now. You know, you have the lockdown available. You, you have the uh, I think it's called overdrive the the KO ultimate again. Null what, command. Null command. That's it. The null command available once more. Uh, you know, so, Quacksmack does have that Sova ult to counter and Logic with the KJ ultimate for that post plant as well. They're also close to their own, own null command. I feel like CSUF has the ability to really upset here on this round if they can get that opening pick and get themselves onto the site, which is why the Huskies have taken such a mid lockdown approach with this round. I mean, look at all of that utility faced out mid side and cat. Yeah, just really trying to kind of read any sort of mid aggression this is that beautiful push that i i, I talk about and i really love kiana for doing this this push from savo gets so much info for them on this b site honestly if tiny wants to he could leave right now and move towards a but bondo being able to stall out here for the team he is able to kind of give tiny a little bit of time but look at this hold from savo there's the peak he has to fall back as a result as this push comes in towards market it's going to be on on this back of the little alarm bot that could. Holds the push, but not for much longer. Chris M having to give up that space towards defender spawn. Oh! And it's immediately another swing into the B site for Savo. He's able to finally take care of Quacksmack. Sacred Jukes with one onto Chris M. He picks up the Odin. Jet isn't a known Odin character, and Exene proves that. Getting that kill onto Savo, but Tiny still here. Still here to buy time. Senja gets taken out by McLogic in mid. It forces this 2v3. Tina, Tiny at such low health. Bondo clearing out mid. McLogic not being able to find anything. Tiny's suppressed, although there's no abilities to really take offline here. This retake... Has to come in sooner rather than later. It's a push by Bondo trying to take out that lockdown. It does get destroyed. So it's more and more time again, again. Being taken off the clock. Sacred Jukes misses the op shot. Makes things look possibly doable. Exene cleans it up. Gets a fourth for Cal State Fullerton. But man, that was close. Yeah, that was that was a crazy round. I mean, like we said, that, that round was definitely... Uh, there was a lot in the hands of CSUF to make that round playable. Uh, they did a really good job of getting themselves onto the site. And then once they set up that post plant, uh, the retake for the Huskies is just so, so hard onto that B site. I feel like that's why even though when you're playing on Ascent, that B site, it seems a, like absolutely atrocious to try to execute onto. But the post plant scenario is so rewarding. So you kind of get this little trade off of like, okay, it sucks to get in. But once you're in, it feels really good to lock it down versus that A site where arguably it's a little easier to hit. You know, you have to explode out from tree. You have easy access to heaven if you can get that tree control. Uh, but the post plant, definitely a lot more playable for defender side. So I think they made the right choice of committing to that B and, and utilizing that KJ as best they could uh, to win that round. For sure. And you immediately see this flash dash play. <coughs> it gives Fullerton so much control on towards that B side. But Keanu, reading this completely fully, just ready to, to get in for that A side. McLogic. Oh, doesn't get cleared by Savo. That's an immediate opening pick for the way of Fullerton. Sacred Jukes is able to take out Tiny on the spam from main. It's a 3v5 now at this point. And I mean, Chris M's at like half HP. I, I don't want to say it's it's not possible because, you know, I've seen 1v5s before, but man, it's not favorable. No, this is this is definitely to be a, a little unexpected for the Huskies, I think. they I don't think they were anticipating, you know, this kind of pressure from their opponents. Oh, Chris now left 1v4. Yeah, it just proves that Sacred Jukes able to finally close it out. This is the first round in the entire game. I just want to mention this because I think it's kind of funny. This is the first 
round in this entire game that Sacred Jukes didn't die. That's I, that's correct. <laughs> like that that's... is, he died every single round on the first half, and and that to me is is kind of crazy. I, I mean, I mean, it's tough. You're the KO. You literally have a second life. I think sometimes that makes you feel like you're just unkillable uh and especially on a map like ascent where when you're playing on attack you're the initiator you're the one that's supposed to go in after your jet dives in and we saw what some of those initiations looked like what some of those what some of those sight takes looked like I, it was a little scrambled i think from csuf on their attack on on a good percentage of their hits um so you, you know I'm, I'm gonna try not to be too critical of that yeah but that's that KJ Utility taken offline. If there's any chance for Keanu to get into this round, it has to be now. You see Chris M taking that kill on his Sacred Jukes as immediately Bondo finds one onto McLogic, does get taken out by Wizdran. Spike has gone down, or has at least fallen, hasn't been planted at this point. The tap forced out here just to try and maybe force an overpush. This is huge. Weapons now in hands of Senja. I think they heard that reload, so they're going to be ready to clear him. Chris M immediately forced out by Wizran here. The lineup from Senja, able to find one, isn't able to find Xene, and it makes a sixth round for CSUF. Yeah, it was a, a, a tricky situation for sure. I think I think the Huskies with that post plant, they, they, they had the right idea of, I think, trying to play around that heaven control. I, I think what I would have liked to see maybe a little bit more was either the double up cross he a hell and just trying to ignore that drone the best you can, or, you know, maybe committing to backing out Jenny and taking the fight on the tree player together. It, it just seemed a little disjointed where one of them was actively looking for the fight on heaven and the other one was tucked into hell waiting for the drop. Uh, and I think in those situations, it's really, really important that you and your duo in that 2v3 are perfectly in sync with each other about what you want to accomplish. For sure. I, I think that makes complete sense. And now as we move away from that post plant, the, the advantage of getting that bomb down though is the economics and we see Keanu here <coughs> with a full buy in round three. And you know, three players on the side of CSUF on pistols. McLogic has immediately been found trying to sneak into that smoke. Xeem's able to find one under Chris M, but Senja and Tiny respond immediately. Oh Bondo's God. only able to find one before getting traded out. It's a 2v2 on both sides. If Tiny isn't careful here, he goes down to Wizdran on a ghost. Senja 20 HP, 1v2, you're able to find Wizdran, but McLogic has a Vandal of his own. It's going to be the first person to hit a shot. 20 HP to 30, retake for McLogic here. Alarm bot readied up. Market door taken care of. Nope, not, 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 not at all, actually. McLogic <laughs> just having to move away. One bullet too short of taking care of that market door. Senja playing around this area in lane. McLogic moving into the site. The alarm bot goes off. Bomb gets tapped. One, two, three, four. Senja swings. Does he? He has to swing now. There it is. It's three kills for Senja to clutch this round out. 1v2 against S Fullerton. But that was a bonus round for Fullerton. And they made it to get it to a 1v1. Yeah, that was pretty impressive, to be honest. I, I I think Logic was really underestimated on that defensive round. And we have to give a ton of credit for him because he has been making that Sheriff feel like a full buy. Like, that was two kills for him on the round and nearly finding the third as Sender was on 20 HP at the end there. Uh, that was a, basically single-handedly preventing that A hit. Savo just getting bested by that Sheriff, and it, it kind of left Bondo out to dry, not anticipating that he was going to have to deal with a second second day player on that hit yeah not at all but you know what i say uh if you play it right sheriff is basically a vandal so you know mclogic really making good work of that we need, to, we need to give that a better ring to it i don't like the way that sounds what a sheriff is basically a vandal yeah we, we got to make that a little snappier we'll, we'll have to we'll take that back to the lab and work wordsmith it a little bit okay. yeah yeah but now we see this, look at this fight in mid. It's Chris M versus Wizdran just right next to each other. In, in like literally just across the wall from each other are the two Omen players just waiting as this B hit has already come in from Keanu. Tiny planting this spike as Quacksmack. Ooh, barely dodges the spam on the smoke from Savo. If McLogic oh, is boy. careful here, Wizdran forces that kill out onto Chris M. 
Savo has to back up here, has to back off of this play. Senja's able to find Secret Jukes, but Xen with the off, able to find one before getting traded out by Tiny. So it's now a 3v3. As this sight hit comes in, two players out from main, one out towards stairs. Main players have gone to the lane as Tiny hiding in the corner. He's able to find McLogic. Savo and Tiny combine. Handle that retake. It's post plant going well. Double digits up for Keanu. Yeah, that's really nicely done from the Huskies. I think Tiny finding that swing onto market to clear out that offer really made the difference in that round. Xene, you know, uh, we've been we've been we're talking about some of his executes and some of his holds, but you know, you're checking the skill scoreboard. He's he's managed to drop 12 for this team. Like he's not he's shooting decent. He's he's getting his kills when they matter and taking him out early enough in that round where that operator really can't provide any additional value beyond that first opening pick is 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 crucial for success there. Good presence of mind from Tiny to, to play for that win con. And there's that one layout from Wizdran in towards B main. It's going to stop this aggression that Kiana was looking for. They wanted to just do an outright B hit. They know that they're on uh, against the save here. But instead, they want to start looking towards Cat Bondo. If you're not careful, if you're not careful, Exene will be able to call oh. you out. There's the trigger discipline. Exene with the classic. Only able to find one. Only able to find Chris M before Tiny 180 flicks onto his head now is mclogic playing back in in the back of the a site here playing in that dark cover of tiny eventually clears him this plant from bondo does go down senja on this rewrap from tree gonna try and get a backstab onto these last two players of wizran and quack smack tiny does go down trying to be a little kill hungry quack smack at nine hp there's that hit coming in. Senja cleans it up. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Really, really nice flank there from Senja to get those last two kills on the round. I mean, it's it was perfect flank timing. And, and I agree with you about Tiny. I think that was completely unnecessary, to be honest. <laughs> Jumping up on the boxes and giving the, sen the, the Sheriff fight that perfect headshot hitbox uh, to take. I, I think they had the post plant locked down. And he, he, he was just giving them a little parting gift. He felt bad. He wanted to give them something to stay in the game. I mean, he's dropped 20 on the game. So maybe he's feeling a little bad about what he's doing to yeah, these guys right now. That's what I was going to say. I don't think he wanted to go 20 and 8. You know, I think he, you know, he didn't want to look that good. Yeah, um, yeah. But, you know, he is looking real fierce as Savo. Now I'm only on a Sheriff, just looking to make some money moves here. Wizdran does spam him down through Market. It's going to force a recall from oh, all of these players. Chris, Sam, if you're not careful, you'll walk right into Xene's off. But Bondo takes care of that before Xene can do anything too crazy. Bondo, if you're not careful, Wizdran is able to take you and Chris M down. Now that's... Three on the round for him. He's on for this ace. Tiny, just looking to hold. It's now Tiny and Senja. These two players that went huge in that first half here. Both ults available for them. So, you know, we could see a commitment onto a site with a lockdown. That's oh, what's choose. this? Senja pushing in B. Lobby baiting out the smoke here from CSUF. But Tiny on the full knife out wrap to A with bomb in hand. Yeah, I think it's just, you just want to wait. You want to see if CSUF gets a little impatient. McLogic does exactly that. As now Sacred Jukes alone in towards this B site. Has to try and defend. Senja oh my committing gosh. this lockdown. They really want to sell this fake. CSUF kind of falling for it. You see this rotation immediately getting pulled. Tiny committing to this A site at this point. He does have the Hunter's Fury to play post plant. Senja towards mid. He's able to find one. It's a 1v2 for Tiny at this point. Oh, he has to try and get this. I think they wanted to play off of the Tiny Sova ultimate here, but he's not going to be able to set up for it until he takes out at least one of these defenders. Yeah, but at that point, CSUF will have the timing. They'll know where he is. He'll, he won't be able to find an escape. There's the flash out. Tiny doesn't get cleared. He's able to take one under. Oh, Black it's Smack done. It's done. That's the opportunity you were just talking about. Being able to play for that Hunter's Fury. The tag goes through. It's more time bought out for Sacred Jukes. The stick comes through. It doesn't matter. That's the time bought with the Hunter's Fury. No time remaining. Sacred Jukes has to run away. Tiny might go down to the spike here. He does. 
But so but does Sacred Jukes. Match point for Keanu. So does Sacred Jukes, and that's huge. It's a, that was a really, really nicely executed fake from the Huskies. Senja, knowing that exactly when he places that ultimate, they're going to go to one of two places. It's either going to be CT or that mid wrap, and playing that pressure on mid to try to buy Tiny that extra time to get that bomb down and play that rotation. Very, very crucial that Tiny was able to find that pick onto Quack, Quack Smack. And, and honestly, hear, hear me out. I, I, I'm starting to think. That in yeah. this game, in this particular moment in time in Valorant, the yeah. Operator is the lowest cost to affect conversion gun we've seen. I think the Op has gotten a total of two kills out of five purchases, is what I've noticed in the game. Two kills for five buys. That's a disgustingly low ratio for such an expensive weapon. Well, I mean, I think that's just because, you know, uh, these players are cracked and they know how to play around an Op. And uh, maybe there's some some nerve factors you could try and, and argue, but I mean we've seen how powerful the op can be. And something that I was gonna mention earlier, we'll, we'll talk about it more in the post game, is I think Savo more than being a duelist or a sentinel, I think he he works really well on agents that allow him to use that op. Yeah. I think Savo's op is is one of the most powerful pieces of utility that he has, and so I kind of hope I don't obviously I. I I hope Keanu can close this out 2-0, but if we do go to map 3, I actually kind of want to see them keep that same comp where Savo actually goes onto the chamber, because I think his AWP is just something that should not be messed with. Now, this A fake coming out for Keanu, Bondo popping that null command towards that A site to try and force these rotations out. Chris M, if you're not too careful, you're going to get backstabbed here, but before that, he's able to find 3. It forces Mikologic and Sacred Jukes into a 2v4 on this retake. The nano swarms out to delay. Yeah, that's uh that's a Chris M moment. One of the many, one of the many Chris M moments. Oh, that's a the logic moment right now. Make logic coming in big with that double kill. It's this rewrap from Bondo through main. He heard one towards lane. There it is. McLogic goes down. It's Sacred Jukes 1v2 to clutch it all, to wriggle life back into Fullerton. He's able to find the first, but the spam onto the spike might be too good. The reload comes in. He spins around, but Bondo with the headshot too clean makes it 13 to 6 on map one of Ascent. I'm not going to lie to you. I thought that game was going to go very differently. That was a lot more competitive than, you know, maybe we were anticipating going into this match. And that's no discredit to the opponents. I, I, I think, you know, coming into this game, you know, you do your around assessments, you do, you do a little bit of your scouting. You don't really get the full story of a team until you play against them. And even though 13 to 6, most people would consider that to be a pretty one-sided story. I think CSUF, the rounds that they had where they had impact looked way too freaking good like it, it was it was actually scary at times even in that last round there mclogic popping off and finding three kills for himself after chris m had basically you know wrapped up the game and it was over finding a way to add that last little breath kind of into the round and, and making it look winnable and playable for his team uh, i mean this is a team that i think is going to give us a really really entertaining match tonight and i'm very much excited for what map two has to offer yeah i think map two it's gonna be great was it it's lotus yeah i, I believe so yeah so i'm a big fan of lotus so i'm super excited for it and we will get to lotus after this very short break
Hello everyone and welcome back to the Keanu Esports stream. C Val West Phase 1 Keanu Huskies take on California State University Fullerton Campus, otherwise known as Titan Esports Blue. I'm joined by Ancient Angel and we are jumping into our second map of the day here going into Lotus as the Huskies lead by one in the series. Angel, that last game, quite a lot to carry over into this next game I feel. There's a, quite a little bit to, to think about and mull over as we walk into map number two. I think it's a lot to it's you know it's a lot to chew on if you want to say for the side of CSUF starting on the defense here on Lotus, uh, moving into that you got 13 sixth, you're not looking too fantastic and I mean looking at their comp right now I'm <laughs> I'm actually I don't want to say I'm a little confused but I'm like I this is such a crazy off meta pick I'm actually kind of excited to see what they're able to do with it we're, we're seeing possibly double duelist a chamber maybe whereas on the side of Keanu you're just looking at you know stable you know this is the meta all the way down Bondo actually moving on to this omen here I think makes a lot of sense uh, just because we get to see uh, this kind of bit of aggressiveness and this bit of playmaking that Bondo gets to do on the omen while still being that more supportive element that we've seen from him in the past and this is the the agents that CSUF have gone for it. Solo Omen controller, Sky, and then a double duelist of Rays and Neon with KJ as your Sentinel. Huh. Lee, how do you feel about this? How do you feel about this, Eddie? Um, I felt better when it was the chamber. <laughs> when they were hovering the chamber, I felt a lot more safe. Uh, I felt more comfortable. I, I, I've i seen the Neon variant on this map. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with the Neon variant on this map. But the Neon variant, from what I remember, typically replaces the Rays, and you're usually running it in combination with Breach, and you're playing for explosive main control. Now... It's a strat where if you remember Haven back on Neon's release or shortly thereafter, it was actually popularized on Haven because you have the advantage to close those long gaps down C and A on that Haven site with the Neon dash. And in this map on Lotus, you have a similar story on A and obviously into that C site as well. You can kind of explode out onto that main and take really good control where a lot of teams typically like to post up and play some pretty pretty strong base defense. So I, I'm not opposed to the Neon pick, but the Neon with the Rays to me, it feels like uh, they're telling too many stories at once here with this comp. Yeah, it feels like they're doing too much. I am a fan of Neon on Lotus, and I think that Neon on Lotus actually works out really well, but with the kind of, you know, this double duelist run them down style, we're really going to have to see a different change of pace and, and almost a change of confidence out for uh, the Titans here on towards map number two of Lotus. Just a reminder, if you're just joining us, Kiano is up a map so far in this best of three so you know they are looking here to close out in two mclogic position been spotted salvo jumping classic able to find one but no more as exine shuts him down plant out by bondo for main and it's oh. an immediate double flank here wizdran calls out chris m's flank himself now bondo has to fight this 1v2 on his own towards mound he's able to find the first he's able to find the second but not the third or the fourth as now finally Fullerton able to grab another pistol here, and it gives them that first round. Let's talk about this Neon. This is exactly what this Neon does for this composition. You you throw out the stuns at A lobby, you take that aggressive A control, you basically corral your opponents into B into into spawn, and you give that you 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 extend them an offer. You say fight me on A when I've got my entire team posted up in lobby or walk C into my KJ trap. Now, the KJ trap was not able to defend defend on, on a pistol round into five, which is why the Huskies, you know, confident in that choice, they take it. But immediately, I don't know if you watched, Xene, the second that they're, they're spot out on C, runs back through spawn with his dash and sprints over to C. He's there before the Huskies have even finished taking the site. It's, it's one of the things that makes Neon such an incredibly interesting agent to watch is how quickly you can rotate with that dash yeah of course it's very very strong and we actually see exine opting to move towards this c site here and make an aggressive stance there quack smack catches out chris m's aggression and sacred jukes is able to find two tiny able to find exine two bullets left in the frenzy forced to reload 1v3 here he does have the spike so he could rotate over to a if he sees fit i think he does as he's just trying to wait, waiting for any aggression. CSUF, known to be a little bit antsy in these kind of positions. Not necessarily playing. You see immediately this pack start to break up. So I now want Tiny 
I was gonna say, I wonder if he just makes the. Yeah. Yeah, it's unlucky. It's hard. It's tough to figure out what to do in that situation, but I almost would have wanted to see him just like call out that rotation from B and maybe cross all the way to C because I feel like this angle here, right where Wizdran is looking, uh, right on that alleyway, is actually a decent frenzy fight. And if you can get yourself planted on C, I feel like the tight angles that C offers might have actually been better for that that current situation. It's a tough read to make, and I mean we're talking about you know making the best out of a pretty much doomed situation to begin with, but uh, unfortunate reads. Uh, for the Huskies as they are going to fall their second round and hopefully now on their bye round start singing, uh, swinging things into their favor. Looking to swing things in their favor is Keanu and we immediately see this utility war around C as Tiny is alone here. He's going to get forced out by so much utility. He's able to fall back and live and Senja and Tiny are both able to find two but they both go down. It's now a 3v3. It's a commitment by Bondo, Savo and Chris M in towards this A site. Or at least that's what they wanted. But now, there's the commitment coming in. Oh, Savo blast packing in towards the back of the site. Bondo able to find one, but not before going down to McLogic in tree. Chris M on the swing. Him and Savo are able to combine, and it's now a 1v2 for Quacksmack. There he is. Going up towards heaven. If Savo gets caught out here, which he does, Quacksmack is low, but he could get the job done. He doesn't predict that Chris M is in drop. And that's now a first round, but a very close first round for Keanu. I like this neon. <laughs> I had to yeah. think about, you know, how I wanted to phrase that. I, I, I quite truly, I think it's one of the most interesting agents in the game. I think it doesn't see enough play. I think... I think Raze is, is, is just seen to be like the, okay, Neon's like your little brother and you're like, yeah, 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 whatever, but I'm the real, I'm the real duelist, you know, I'm the real character you're going to pick for explosivity and speed and aggression, but, but, but just look at what this character provides. It's so much pressure. You, you, you can self wall. You have, you have your own crowd control on CC. You can fast rotate. I just think the skill cap is too high, to be honest. I, I honestly think Xene is like my hero right now for picking this and locking this in on Lotus. Well, I, I do want to say this again, you know, I'm a stats nerd, just like you are. Um, and fun fact, actually, hold on, let me hold this as Xene now just goes down as we were singing the praise of the Neon. Savo pushing through, is able to find Sacred Juice. That's both of the duelists down in this round. It's a 5v3 for Keanu, as now Quacksmack forced into the back of the A site here, just trying to play the post plant. Wizran has been smoked off, but also smokes off the Huskies from entering that A site. They decide to not commit to this. Savo looks to open the tree door just to buy more presents, buy more time. Force these titans away from the sea site is this killjoy utility online it will yet to be seen bondo teleporting through it it doesn't matter anyways he's on this sea site the smokes are in albeit there is a small gap mclogic could try and play here he does exactly that the seekers have come out bondo takes out mclogic trying to spam through the smoke it's a 2v5 on the retake chris m 17 hp on this backstab if he doesn't get called out here he might be able to just clean up this round right now as we speak. And you were uh, you were kind of spitting for a minute there. I liked uh, uh, I, I liked how well you were going, but I almost wanted you to just stop and and give, finish giving me your thoughts on these neon stats. I, I I wish I could just talk about neon instead of the game. I love that agent so much, but we are going to be going into this rounding out this post plant here as Savo locks it down pretty nice and easy onto Wizdran, and I think that's just a very well executed a hit from the Huskies. It's, it's the first time where they've been able to utilize that Viper Lurk and really create that pressure without needing to overextend themselves in their positioning, and they're rewarded for that beautiful execution. Yeah, able to get so much so much pressure, so much presence off of that initial kill on Xeon, and it, it forces that A hit to come in. So here's the quick stat for you. Um, between comps that ran solo raise uh, versus solo neon comps, uh, in terms of duelists on this map, in, in the highest level play in, in, in VCT, uh, 2023 neon had the higher win rate but a lower pick rate so maybe that's something to be said here as now we see this eco come out for the side of fullerton trades not going in their favor however is chris m and tiny both able to find one yes you do lose bondo but some sacrifices will need to be made <coughs> not every round can be a flawless as here is that play in towards the a site tiny looking to plant Telling his teammates, hey, watch the drop as Wizdran peeking out with that Sheriff isn't able to find anything. Wizdran using that Shadow Step pushes back up. Savo going back down. Tiny finds the kill. Chris M just trying to wait little by little. 
Maybe try and find any other backstab to come through. McLogic not having it. He's just playing for exits. Okay, stays hidden. Not not anymore. He wants he wants this push in. McLogic not able to find the thing. It's a quadruple swing out from Keanu. Guarantees four alive as they get their third. You ever seen the uh, Viper Wall drops and you're 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 looking to clear and there's five people crouched behind the Viper Wall in a firing squad? I I feel like that was like the offensive equivalent from the Huskies where there's just one little guy and he's doing his best to to, to find his picks and they uh, they sent the goon squad after him with that triple wide swing uh, out of a lobby to clear that out. You know it, you have to you you have to when when the you caught when the economy is that good you you've really just got to pad the stats and make that play happen. Yeah, it just felt like someone said, hey, just quad peek him, and then everyone else was like, <laughs> whatever you say, boss. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah like, that's it. Like, that's, just, like yes, real correct. Batman villain style. Correct, you know? correct. Like, yeah, and I think <laughs> the voice the voice was perfect. That's exactly what I'm kind you. of picturing when I'm looking at that play. Yeah, it's like, you know, like the me and the boys meme, which is all the Spider-Man villains. It's yes. exactly what it was, and we see me and the boys on our way to ult dump the C site. It forces everyone out. And makes Ke it gives Keanu this plant for free. Bondo looking to try and plant for mound again. The spam comes through by Quacksmack. He is he able to get out? Yes, he is. And this heal from Tiny will not go underappreciated here. It's another guiding light out. Chris M just looking to draw some rotations in through the door. Maybe try and think of them playing any different. Senja able to find the first onto Exene. Quacksmack and Sacred Jukes, however, each able to find one. Quacksmacks with a second, doubles up, makes it a 4v2 here. It's a peek from Chris M out towards water. Nothing goes through. It's just Bondo alone. 1v3, make it 1v2. Spike needed to get diffused here. Bondo able to find the first onto Quacksmack. The spam has to come through. Wizdran just sticking. Oh. If you're not careful, Bondo, Wizdran gets the round. It's 3-3. Three to three. The spam not coming through. Oh, that's so unlucky. He just had his crosshair lined up in the wrong spot. He didn't want to push it, but oh, so unfortunate for the Huskies. They had it all good. They used all the ultimates right. They got all the right entry frags, and they just couldn't close it out because of a misplaced crosshair on that spam. Omen diff, I guess, for Wizdran. Yeah, it kind of is. It, I like. I, actually, I shouldn't say that it kind of is. In that round, yeah, just Bondo not being able to get the spam all the way. He was kind of aiming for this one little narrow part of that spike, but we know it's a one meter circle. And of course, as soon as we say that, the Duelist Diff coming out on the other side, Savo cleaning up Exene in that first second of the round. And now we see again this pressure made by Chris M towards A. It forces Sacred Jukes to just stay here. And it also forces Quacksnack to stay posted on this B site. Yeah, this A this A defense from CSUF, I mean, they've been flipping this KJ virtually every single round. They're trying to get a read on how the Huskies like to hit. Oh, Quacksmack so, able to get a couple good oh bits of God. damage out. But Bondo, with the quick play, is able to take care of Quacksmack. There's that Viper's Pit out on towards the B site here. Tiny, just looking to plant it, lock it down, make this a fourth round for Keanu at this point. 3v5 on the retake. I mean, what else can you say here? This is just a really good pivot yes. by Keanu. It's really nicely done, and it's pretty unplayable for CSUF at this point. I mean, you're literally walking into the Viper Ultimate to try to make this work, and, you know, even with those early peaks, trying to buy yourself some additional time, I think Wishran's just going to make the call here to save. There's really nothing you can do. You're just going to try to play your exits. Uh, really, really well done from the Huskies to get that Viper result online, and should give them enough time to potentially find a second one a second opportunity in this half to pull it up as well. Uh, it's basically a free win on that B site. I'm confused as to why Sacred Jukes even went for that. I mean, you have a Phantom. It's a five v two at this point on the retake. Don't we don't we don't need to go for that. We can keep our rifles into the next round. <coughs> Sacred Jukes. We don't we don't necessarily have to peek into that. I mean, I suppose if you just have some crazy read that you're going to be able to catch a timing, you know, by all means. But just it it didn't really feel like. I mean, maybe, you know, there's another world where he's able to find two there and we're praising Sacred Jukes for that play, but I don't see that world, at least. Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, I, th I think it's sometimes in the heat of the moment, you're just like, hey, 
I have a gun. Let's shoot it. Let's see what happens. But it, 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 Valorant, you know, it is a tactical shooter, and that means you need to be a little bit tactical about the choices you're making and the gunfights you're taking. And and unfortunately, a two versus five running into a Viper's all through a tight corridor might not be the most tactical choice of gunfight that you have available to you. Yeah, and, and now as we see this hit start to come in towards that C, or towards this A site rather. You immediately see McLogic and all of his utility being taken offline. Bondo, doesn't matter if he's blinded or if he has full vision of oh. the day. It doesn't matter. Both controllers are able to open up this round. Chris M and Bondo apiece. Sacred Jukes with the classic, able to take care of Savo. Bondo responds in kind. 3v5, turn 3v3 as Wizdran is able to find one onto Chris M. Bondo with a third on the round. On for four. Senja in the dark cover. Now peeks out. It's Quacksmack. Trying to find a way into this round. Trying to get a clutch here. Spam's coming through. Nothing hit. It's Quack Smack in the corner of this dark cover. Trying to get anything done. Tapped down. And finished off by Tiny. I love the way Senjo played around that smoke. I mean, that was... It's just really, really good awareness of kind of that movement and positioning uh, from Quack Smack. And I mean, taking another look at the scoreboard, this guy is always showing up for his team. Like, he is... He's always there. It doesn't matter. He's an initiator both times, info initiator both times, basically full support, and he's still top fragging. Like, Quacksmack, Quacksmack is my MVP. I, I won't lie to you. I think he's he's just he's playing a phenomenal game. It's just a one v three and a smoke. What are you what are you gonna do, man? You gotta you gotta give the guy some credit. There's really not a whole ton of options he's got. You think he's MVP over anyone on on Keanu today? Uh, can he's MVP CSUF OPP. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Well, Tiny, in the meantime, decides that he's had enough of playing for now. He's going to take a break. Um, and likewise, Quacksmack as well. So they do end up going sky for sky here. Uh, no no initiators left in this round. It's going to be all in the back of everyone else to make plays for themselves. No one's going to be setting you up for him. Except for maybe a paranoia on Bondo. Uh, and, and maybe that boom bot from Savo on the side of the Huskies. Oh, the, hus so. the Huskies will make it work. And actually, right now, it's across through stairs, and it looks like the call is to finish B. They've called out all of this KJ utility on A. They're a little worried about hitting into that KJ, uh, onto that A side, and, and trying to clear out tree uh, with that utility. Bon uh, Chris will go for a pretty late lurk around, and he did catch out Sacred Jukes, but the crouch to throw off the crosshair placement will, will mess him up and give him the kill. And look at this flank from Xeon. Whoa! Piano doesn't catch this. Speaking of not catching it, Wizdran not catching that that breakable door was open and that Keanu were looking to take it. He just moonwalked right into that. Yeah, Bondo just trying to tap out the spike. There it is. Savo looking to clear out everything in towards this C-Link. This is where Keanu want to play this post plant from. Senja planting one of those nano swarms on the spike. It's forcing a 3v3 retake into this very, very narrow choke point. There's a lockdown committed on the side of I'll state Fullerton. Nothing to really be done from it yet. Bondo. Oh, this is so smart. Using the From the Shadows to get out just in time. Xeon catches it out. He's detained! He's detained. It doesn't matter though. Savo and Senja each able to combine onto one kill apiece. Make it two for Senja. I don't know if you remember the first time we saw Bondo execute that play. It was a scent. He was trapped in hell. He used it to frame dodge the KJ ult and then cancel. No, it was Chris. Chris on the omen. He used it to frame dodge the KJ ultimate and then teleport back to his original location to play inside of the KJ ultimate, but with his utility available. And when I saw it, I, I it was mind-blowingly inspirational to me. I think Bondo was trying to take a page out of Chris M's page, uh, Chris M's book. And I think he just forgot to read the fine print there about the timing and just narrowly missed it. Uh, but it's such a creative way to use that Omen's ultimate. Arguably one of the less least impactful ultimates in the game. Uh, finding a way to make it really, really game-changing is, is, is such a cool adaptation of the ability. Yeah, I think I think Chris M's you know, personal playbook, I need lessons from him. He's probably the best controller I can think of at the moment. We immediately see him going to work, finding another opening kill on this Viper Lurk. Wizdran only able to find one while Bondo one-ups him. Anything you can do, I can do better. Omen getting that second kill. 
As now McLogic towards that A-site, Chris M on this lurk, two lethal quacks now. Oh! Oh, maybe he's able to find two! Hold on, this becomes doable! And as soon as I say that, Senja closes it out, says no more aim labs. No more aim labs, Mr. Quacksmack. We're getting our seventh. I take it back. Quacksmack is the MVP of the game, okay? I don't care how this game resolves. I don't care if they lose 0-2. This guy's nuts. I was... I, I, like, how do you win that 1v2 Sheriff into Vandals? In what world? In what world are you just that crispy with it? That was really, really that's... well played from him. That's some certified aim labs, dude. I need what's his what's his rank on on Kovacs? You know, like <laughs> drop the Kovacs, bud. Drop the Steam yeah. URL. Exactly. Come on, drop the drop this the Counter Strike bots. You know, what what's the Y prac? <laughs> Only real OGs know what Y prac is. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, you're 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 losing me a little bit, but uh, you know, it's okay. maybe I'm just not a real OG. I, I did want to comment a little bit about the super slow default from the Huskies. This is the first time they've really just kind of chilled out the pace. You know, Chris is still doing his A lurk strats. He's still putting his pressure, but they haven't really taken any space. They haven't really contested anything. Uh, they've drawn some pressure over to the C side, but I believe, no, I was gonna say, I thought Chris was a little closer to that ultimate. So there's actually no Viper's pit available. Chris is really just committing to this B lurk right now. He is, but if it's Zine, oh. they only get the timing, which he is, the showdown, or the showstopper does come out for Savo. As McLogic gets taken down, he fires it. Xene goes down through the smoke. If I'm Xene, I feel pretty salty about that. Quacksmack just trying to push out that utility through that C door, try and get something done, try and make these distractions, force Bondo away from <laughs> the actual site retake coming through. It's a nice little 1v1. Now the Seekers have come out on the side of Tiny. Senja able to find Sacred Jukes. It's Wizdran and Quacksmack. 2v4 on this retake. I, I don't really see it happening. Yeah. So at this point, the time has gotten too low. Number is not in your favor. Bondo. Uh, he tried oh, to TP through okay. the doorway on the last possible frame. Yeah. Oh, Quacksmack. Oh. He's only able to find... Oh, wait. He could find more. He was at least able to find one, though. If any more are found, if Tiny's able to get this Ooh. out of the hands of Quacksmack, maybe it's a hunt well worth it. But for now, there oh my goodness, Senja! With the wall bang shot, just through the corner of that wall there. I think now that's you know you can argue that's a hunt <coughs> well made. But I, I mean, look at the frags. Yeah, it's it's a really really nice round from the Huskies to push themselves into nine three territory here on the half. I was trying so hard to stifle a laugh during that round because Quacksmack and Bondo were in the most ridiculous one v one on doorway where Quacksmack just kept opening it and then sitting behind the box and it reminded me of like you know when you're a little kid and you go to the airport for the first time and you just run in the rotating doors like eight times in a row. That's kind of what it felt like watching that one v one of Quacksmack just opening the door over and over and over and over again. Uh, uh, you know, I'm gonna stop talking about silly stuff because Xene just hit probably the nastiest Guardian one tap I've seen in a minute. Really nice shot from him. 1v1s. They go 1 4 1, raise for raise. Chris M, though, making sure to keep numbers in favor by taking out McLogic. Xene goes down next. It's Wizdran alone in drop, flushed out by the Molly. Chris M doesn't care. He pushes through it. Oh my goodness. And now it's just Quacksmack. Uh, last alive. Well, let's be honest. If anybody's going to make this happen 1v4, it's Quacksmack. My goat, my hero. Quacksmack going to take his first 1v1, but Chris will find his fourth. Yeah, I mean, I think it's kind of poetic there that Quacksmack looking to 1v4 and Chris M shuts it down with his fourth kill in that round. Uh, I just want to take a moment uh, as we get into this half here to look at the fact that Quacksmack, like frags-wise, just, just purely in terms of frags, I know that there's, you know, intangibles behind them, is on par with Bondo and Chris M. And then no one else so far on, on Fullerton is, is even at double digits. Uh, uh, Quacksmack has almost as many kills as the rest of his team combined. Yeah. He's too short. Wow. <laughs> it's just Quacksmack math. That's Quacksmack yeah. math. 14, four, 14 equals 50%. Yeah. I mean, I feel like if you're... If you're Quacksmack, I feel like you're doing more than 50% of the work. You're the initiator. You're the only initiator for the team, meaning you're setting up your team. Uh, but now as they move on to this attack side, which Lotus tends to be attacker-sided, it's going to be up to Keanu to really kind of 
you know, get four rounds here. That's all they need. They just need four rounds. They need to make it convincing. <clears throat> Chris M got poison orb. A bit too. Oh too my high god! High. Oh my goodness! Senja popping the nano swarm at the perfect time. Gives them both four. Mycologic, can you find anything more than what? one? No. <laughs> oh my gosh, they just ran straight through the utility. They just took it all. The Viper Molly, the KJ Molly, they just got absolutely blended. I I have to say, I don't want to sound, because I've watched the Huskies play all season, so maybe I'm jaded, but I feel like yeah. the Viper KJC setup is pretty standard and competitive. Am I, am I wrong to say that? Uh, I'd say, yeah, I think that it's like, if, if you want to put, like, a percentage to it, I'd say, like, 50% of the time you're doing that. Viper's always going to be on the C site. Uh, but especially on pistol rounds, that's typically the default that gets done. Um, so it, now we see... Going against this round. Classics only. You're conceding 11 here. Tiny, with this flash out of the smoke. Able to find one, but no more. It forces Savo to back up. And Bondo goes down, but Chris M trying to salvage the round with two, makes it a 2v2. Spectre's now available for both sides, for all four players here. It's not looking too great. Yeah, They're I'm not awesome really sure fans. how that happened. Scott, Tiny's flash was fantastic. I think they just overheated on the flash. They they tried to bite off more, they can chew, more than they could chew. Yeah, but now you see Senja here. Senja and Savo. Oh, if Savo gets caught out. On this double push CT, I think he's aware. He is aware. There's Xeen gone, and there's Wizdran to follow. 11 for Keanu, but that was close. Yeah, like I said, this team, I, I mean, the Huskies have always been ahead in the rounds. They've usually been ahead on the scoreboard. It Like, on paper, the Huskies are winning, but I feel like if you just handed someone the score sheet of this game and the last game on Ascent, you're not even telling anywhere close to the full story. CSUF is making these rounds look way tighter than they should be. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's rough. It's rough out here if you're a Cal State Fullerton fan. But now we see Savo and Tiny both opting to push aggressively on the C site, and it feels like a read well made. And, oh, Exene able to find that first kill. Crucial kill at that onto Savo. Tiny alone here on the site. Bondo, if you get too aggressive here, it doesn't matter. He's able to get the flick onto McLogic. Oh, no. I was gonna say, maybe, maybe CSUF had a way into this round. Well, with your Bondo Sentinel gap. gone. Bondo gap. That's all you can Bondo say. Bondo diff. You know, the Bondo on CSUF is just, he's not there, you know? Yeah, that's, that's the biggest difference that's between cool. CSUF and the Huskies right now, because both teams are coming up pretty big in some of these rounds. There's just one team has Bondo and the other team doesn't. That's the real difference maker. Yeah, I, I feel like this uh, the CSUF's uh, Bondo is just not even existing. You know, I don't I don't even think he's there. He's just not playing. Not even in the server. Not even in the server. Speaking of, Bondo gets a second. Senja finds a third. Oh, but Sacred Jukes on this swing. Lowers it down to a 2v2, but now it's rifles in all four hands. It was Spectre's last time. Now it's three phantoms, or three vandals and a phantom. It's Chris M tries to catch Whoa. out Sacred Jukes here. Able to find one. Is Sacred Jukes and that makes it a 1v1. Tiny V Wizdran for match point. Wizdran says, Not yet, Keanu. We're getting one more at least. Yeah, that was um that was a really interesting round to start things off. I feel like the Huskies off of that uh you know uh, pick out B, once you're able to take down that KJ and kind of trap that bomb into that B side, I feel like they probably could have chilled out a little bit and played that post plant with a little bit more patience. Um, but unfortunately, this is what Neon does to games. It just accelerates the pace. And, you know, you talked about the Huskies having that perfect readout Seaside, wanting to play aggressively, you know, close the gap, Spectre versus Vandal, and take that advantage fight. But Savo just wasn't ready for those Neon timings. That Neon sprints out to, to even just to get that slight positional advantage, it really throws off your crosshair placement. And that's really what this character does so, so well, is just abuse crosshair placement with that running animation. Yeah, but look at this look at this read from Keanu. Four players here, two of them with stingers. Tiny just trying to buy a little bit of time for the team. Xene goes down on this on this dash. Sacred Jukes to follow. Chris M with another onto Wizdran. Quacksmack's only able to find one. Chris M with the peak gets a little too egregious here. McLogic 
able to keep numbers in check, make sure Keanu don't have that two-man advantage. But now Bondo, classic in hand, just trying to keep some pressure on. McLogic and Quacksmack forced into this play here, forced into committing to C or opening that door and running it B, in which case Bondo's going to have a backstab either way. Do you want to sight? Keep coming through for Quacksmack off the back of this flash. Goes out now. No one blinded except for a turret, but there's the double swing. Salvo Senja, the veteran duo for this squad, cleans it up, makes it match. Series point, whatever you want to call it. All for Kiana. Really, really, really nice shots here from the Huskies. I mean, just beautiful defense. I'm really, really liking the way that they're they're playing these aggressive defensive rounds. They know that the Neon West wants to run out and overwhelm them, and rather than trying to space out on site and, and give it space to, to contain and control, they're just trying to shut it out right at the door. And I think it's I, I think it's a, it's a risky move, but it's an intelligent one as well. That's already Chris committing this Viper ultimate very, very early on in the round. I'm such a fan of using this Viper's bit off the rip like this. It just forces an extremity of the map to be so difficult for the attackers to try and push through, especially on a round like this where, where you know, those kind of low economy budget weapons are going to be put into play. You see Xene down to a Spectre here as the rest of the team is, is now forced away from this. All Xene is trying to do here is just trying to read any sort of, you know, big aggression that uh, might come out. But Chris and Senja, ever so disciplined here, just not just letting letting Xene come to them if that even happens. We see Savo and Bondo here towards A just to try and keep the pressure on. It leaves Tiny alone as this weak spot towards B, but with... Those KJ Mollies set up, the utility ready. You know, it, it forces this C play to come through. There's the lockdown being committed. They want to push into this Viper's Pit. They want this to be over now. Be it a fake or not, Chris M has to back off here. I don't know if that means that the Viper's Pit is going to go down or not. I think that's exactly what that means. Viper's Pit down. Spike next to follow showstopper out now bondo able to try and start this flank facilitate it with savo chris m oh he's full blind xene running with that specter able to do so much send you though starts to respond oh he wants this over now. He wants it done. 13-4 on map two. It's just quack smack. 1v2. What can you do? You have to do it all. The swing from Tiny is too good. It's four on the round for him. It's over. 4-13. to 13. It's been called. In a 2-0 fashion, Keanu take down Cal State Fullerton to win this match in Seaval. Kind of just line them up like bowling pins and, 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 and knock them straight over. I mean, just a great, great, great door play there on the B site. I, just a, a really strong showing from the Huskies in tonight's game. And like I said, the, store, the scoreboard does not tell the full story. I watched this game live right here with you, and this did not feel like a 4-13. And it's one of the yeah, few I, games... It's that we've watched, that we've had the opportunity of watching the Keanu Huskies channel, where the scoreboard does not match the VOD, right? There are many games where it's just been a total blowout from start to finish, and it feels like we either have complete control or we're getting controlled, you know, one way or the other. This was, and I truly, truly say this, probably one of the most entertaining matches we've had on the Huskies channel so far. Yeah, I think so, especially for, for what the scoreline read. I think that, like, if you looked at any other, like, 6-13, 4-13 game, and you were like, is that... Like, this was absolutely just miles, at, like, miles ahead of, of like, entertainment uh, for for what this ended up being. Um, you know, I guess you could say that, you know, with the way that this ended, you said uh, Tiny lined them up like bowling pins. So, you know, because he was able to line them up like bowling pins, he was able to spare us any more rounds and strike out uh, Cal State Fullerton from this match. <laughs> um, you know, so maybe maybe that's something to be said there. Uh, do you want to just give your MVP of the day? Oh boy! Real quick? See, it's do you so want to give tough. one for each team? Yeah. Well, I, I think <laughs> I 
think you know mine for CSU app. For the Huskies, yeah. for the Huskies, I have to say, I really like the way Senja was playing today. Like I felt really confident in Senja and a lot of the rounds where he was, you know, left alone on site or he was forced to lock it down or he was forced to clutch. I feel like he didn't really fail us. Uh, in many of those situations, I think he showed up and he played his, he did his job and he's kind of been the unsung hero of this team where he's not usually top of the kill board. He's not usually getting a ton of first bloods, you know, as that Sentinel player. So he's not, he doesn't show up in the kill feed a lot, but when you look at the game, 15 and six, like that's, I think that's actually the best KD ratio on the team for the Huskies. You know, he, he, he gets his kills and he plays his life and he always has presence on map. And I think that's an un disputed value that Senja provides to his team. So whether it's acknowledged in the scoreboards or the ratings or whatever or not, I, I, I say I think I have to give it to Senja for today. Yeah, that's a 2.5 KD. So you know what? I'm not going to argue with you. Congrats, Senja. You got our unofficial MVP of the day. MVP of the day for you. In terms of Valorant, that's going to be it for the week, but make sure to go to Keanu Esports Arena. Uh, on so, campus so what's, uh, what's happening on saturday so we're done with our broadcast our, our 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 regular season broadcast for the week but this weekend is the big ticket event it's the red bull campus clutch canadian quali or canadian nationals it's an online competition that we're playing in top 16 teams in canada the absolute number one winner on the weekend we'll get an invitation to the world championships to take place at the volkswagen arena in istanbul the home and host of the 2022 VCT Champions Tour. It's an absolutely incredible opportunity that the Huskies have available for them. And you know they're gonna be fighting hard for this weekend. So we will be streaming the games online, of course, on Saturday, Sunday. Once we get to top four, we'll be taken over by the Toronto Serenity stream, hosted by Red Bull, of course. Uh, but for Saturday, if you are in the Fort McMurray area, you are invited to join us at the Keanu College Clearwater Campus on the second floor in the Doug Schmidt Lecture Hall Theater, where we will be doing an in-person viewing party with Red Bull, pizza, and a bunch of free giveaway items as well. So if you're in the area, make sure you stop by and tune in and support the Huskies. Of course, make sure you tune in. That's Or make sure you stop by on Saturday. But for now, I think for today, that's going to be it from us. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Uh, we hope to see you again back here for whatever game it happens to be, be it Valorant, COD, or Overwatch. But thank you all for watching, and good night.